Welcome to the June Soul Along with Sweet Pea. My name is James and this month we are making the beautiful insect garden hanger. We recommend you follow our photograph written instructions provided in conjunction with this video tutorial. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Alright, let's dive in and make something amazing together. First, I will guide you through each step to create the stunning B panel. Start by placing batting one on top of the hoop and stitching it down. Trim the excess batting, keeping a 1-2mm distance from the stitching. Then, stitch the place and line for the background. Next, position fabric A right side up over the place and line and stitch it down. Trim the fabric, again leaving a 1-2mm seam allowance, leaving the excess in the seams. Proceed to embroider the stems and leaves of the flowers. followed by the red work foliage. Continue by stitching the place alliance for the foliage applique. Place fabric B on top of the hoop covering the place on line and stitch down. Trim the fabric, leaving the excess in the seams. and brought the satin stitch around the foliage. Next, embroider the inner and outer petals of the flowers. Move on to embroidering the bee's antenna, legs and white bottoms on the right side of the hoop. Then, embroider the same features along with the black stripes on the left side of the hoop. If desired, Proceed with the optional mylar step. Stitch the place in line for the bee wings and place mylar on top of the hoop. Covering the line. Then embroider the bee wings and the outline. Feel free to trim the mylar if you used it.
Now remove the panel from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch. Keep it aside until all your panels are completed. Stay tuned for the next steps in this tutorial to bring your insect garden project to life. In this second part of the video tutorial, we will focus on joining all the panels of the insect garden hanger. Let's get started. Begin by laying out your hanger panels in the desired order, ensuring that the long sides of the panels are together. This will help you visualize the final design. Take the first two panels and place them right sides together. Pin them in place and sew a half inch seam, stitching just inside the border lines that are already on the panels. This will create a secure seam that won't be seen on the front later. Repeat this process for the remaining panels, joining them together in the same manner. Open up the seam and iron it flat to create a smooth finish. Now it's time to add the loops for hanging. Retrieve Fabric C, which will be used for the loops. Fold the two longer edges of the fabric widthways and sew a small 12.5mm half inch seam to create a tube. Open the seam and press it open using the tip of your iron. Fold the loop in halfways and iron it. Turn the loop inside out to the right side and press it flat, ensuring that the joining seam is in the middle of the underside of the loop. If desired, you can edge stitch or top stitch the loop for added durability and a neat appearance. Fold the loop in halfways and iron it. Use clips to secure it in place. Now machine baste the edges of the loop together. Repeat this process for the other side of the hanger to ensure both loops are evenly positioned. You can trim the loops to the desired length if needed. Next. Pin both loops to the hanger. Depending on the type of hanger you're using, you may choose to place the loops approximately two inches, five centimeters from the border stitching of the hanger. Adjust the positioning to suit your preferences. Once the loops are in place, stay stitch them to secure them in position. Finally, trim around the perimeter of the hanger to ensure that all sides are even, creating a clean and polished finish.
Great job. Your insect garden hanger is coming together beautifully. Stay tuned for the next section of the tutorial as we continue to bring your project to life. In this third part of the video tutorial, we will focus on creating the back and binding of the runner. Let's dive in. Start by placing Fabric C on your table with the wrong side facing up. Then place your sewn runner on top of Fabric C, ensuring that the wrong sides are together. Pin them together to secure the layers. Optionally, you can also use fabric spray to hold them in place. To keep all the layers of the runner together and maintain a flat and tidy appearance, we will use a technique called stitch in the ditch. This method creates an invisible finish on the front of the runner. While the stitching lines are only visible on the back side, make sure the bobbin thread on the underside matches the fabric and use invisible thread on top of the runner. Decide which seams you want to stitch in the ditch. Not every seam needs to be stitched. Focusing on the main seams that will hold the central blocks flat is perfectly acceptable. Now, Trim the excess backing so it is exactly one and a quarter inches, three centimeters larger than the runner. This extra fabric we use as the binding for the runner. Starting on any side of the runner, fold the backing fabric in half and then fold it in half again. Ensuring that you fold it just over your seam stitching. Pin the folds in place, starting from the middle and working your way to the corners. When you reach a corner, aim for a nice mitered corner by turning your binding in and continuing the folding process as you did for the first side of the binding. You can iron the folds as you go to help achieve neat mitered corners. Fold the final time and pin the corner in place. Continue pinning the binding all around the runner. It's time to sew the binding to the runner. Start sewing anywhere on the binding, stitching just inside the folded edge of the binding. If desired, change your bobbin thread to match the backing fabric. When you reach a corner, simply leave your needle down. Lift the foot, rotate the runner, put the foot down again, and continue stitching in this manner until you've sewn around the entire runner. Once you've finished sewing, press the runner to create a crisp appearance. Congratulations, your runner is now complete.
Enjoy the beautiful result of your hard work. Well folks, awesome job on completing the insect garden hanger with Sweet Pea. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful in bringing your project to life. If you're looking for more embroidery patterns and inspiration, be sure to visit us at sweepea.com. Stay tuned for our next exciting project. Happy sewing.